How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your host Rising Oblivion. Today guys, we're going to be talking about what elements would we like to see in Persona 6 because here recently I've been streaming a lot of Persona 5 Strikers and I've been doing a lot of Persona 4 Gold and I just think that there are certain elements of each of these games that if they incorporate that into Persona 6, I think we would have the perfect Persona game. So I'm going to take five different things from other Persona games and sort of fuse them together and I think if they put this all into Persona 6 we could end up with the ultimate Persona game. Let me know down in the comment section below what would you like to see from the other Persona games incorporated into Persona 6 Hex. It could, just, it could be other like SMT games or other Atlas games. What things would you like incorporated in Persona 6? And the first thing first that I would like to talk about and I think this is something that might end up happening because it looks like SMT5 is probably going to happen as well is these CGI cutscenes. So Persona 5 Strikers brought in a lot of these CGI cutscenes similar to the very ending of Persona 5 Royal. I'm not going to spoil the ending for that or anything, but there's a lot of CGI type cutscenes, pre-render cutscenes, whether it's using these character models instead of doing the anime cutscenes. Now the anime cutscenes are good here and there for certain special little things, but they don't have to animate something specifically that's in a location that all the characters are in already. And these CGI cutscenes actually look super, super nice. If you play through Persona 5 Strikers, you see a ton of these. And whenever they come up, most time, like nine times out of 10, I'd rather see those CGI cutscenes than some of the anime cutscenes. I can understand why you might want to see some of the anime cutscenes instead. I think when it comes to like the opening of the game and the endings of the game and maybe a couple things here and there in the middle, the anime cutscenes do work like super, super well, but it's just a small little story tidbit. I think the CGI cutscenes work super good and I would love to have something like this inside Persona 6. Like I think it could do good narratively and it also sort of helps show where the characters are and what they're doing. The anime cutscenes can sometimes be confusing and sort of disrupt exactly what exactly you're seeing in Persona 4 Golden. The anime cutscenes kind of do this a lot where it goes from the actual models in game to the anime cutscene. The anime cutscene doesn't look one for one <laughs> when it actually comes to what's happening with the actual 3D models so I can see something like that being confusing for certain players at certain times but the CGI cutscenes will be absolutely perfect I think for Persona 6. And for the next thing that I would love to see in Persona 6 is having the Persona 4 Golden card shuffle mechanic. Now, I know regular P4 had it as well, and P3 also had a more simplified version of the card shuffle mechanic after the end of a battle, but I think it's perfect with Persona 4 Golden. The amount of different cards and choices that you can have, it really is kind of fun. It ends up being a little bit of a mini game, but you could really stack up different ways if you want to have a little more XP for your personas, if you want to have a couple more items like skill cards, stuff like that. If you just want to go balls to the walls and just have a ton of XP or you could potentially even gain two, three, four personas if you end up doing your cards right with switching different things to arcane or switching different things to a persona and having the card shuffle mechanic where if you actually do everything good, you get a full on extra bonus to guarantee that you get a card shuffle for the next battle after it's done. I'm not entirely sure if I would want it to be random every single time or whether or not you would actually get a card shuffle or not because that would kind of suck. But I think P5 also makes it sort of random as well. And I don't necessarily like the interrogation stuff with P5. Sometimes it's a little confusing and isn't as fun. I think P5R does a better job with just obtaining personas in general. So you don't ever have to worry about the negotiation stuff too much in P5R. But it's like, why even have it really incorporated? By the time you get Ryuji's ability to just run past the weaker personas and just automatically claim them, you don't even have to go to a battle or nothing. At that point, it's kind of like, well, why even have the interrogation thing there necessarily? And you can't really change too much the outcome of the items and the money. You could do interrogation to potentially get some extra cash, get some extra different things like that, but I feel like the Persona 4 Golden Shuffle card system does it so much better and it makes it unique every single battle. You can fight the same exact enemies, but you could have completely different stuff. The only bad thing about this is that the enemy that you run into and fight in Persona 4 Golden, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be getting that card for the actual card shuffle. So if you end up fighting a certain enemy, let's like say the tank or something like that or a different type of demon, you know, obviously you're not going to be getting that demon as where Persona 5, if you end up running into a certain demon or something like that, you know for sure that that's going to turn into the actual persona that you're getting. So there's a little bit of a thing there that kind of does suck when it comes to the card shuffle stuff, but I still think overall the card shuffle is a lot better with giving you better outcomes, different things like the money, the XP, different stuff like that. I think it's a lot better to have something like that incorporated instead of having, you know, 
the whole interrogation thing. Which brings me to another point that I think P5R does perfectly, and that is Persona Fusion. I think P5R does this really good, almost too good, because I know a lot of people say it's too easy, it's too easy, they make it too easy with this stuff, allowing you to have accessories that do different element stuff and um, fusing different personas together and creating different skill cards because of those personas and different things like that and creating weapons with different personas. I still think that's really cool because I think that in the end makes it to where you can literally have anything you want from these personas, which could be a little bit too easy for some people and I totally understand if you want the game to be a little bit harder, but crank up that difficulty baby <laughs> make it a little bit harder that way or don't play on normal don't play on easy or something like that but i think being able to have the ability to make your personas into different things like skill cards like items and stuff like that is super cool getting to have odin and then making him into mjolnir to give that to somebody else i think that's the coolest thing ever it makes ryuji seem like such a badass he's like wielding a persona that turned into his weapon and I think that's really cool when you get different stat bonuses based off of, you know, whether or not there's a fusion alarm or something like that. It can actually end up being a better, you know, item or something like that, which is really cool. I'm glad that they did that in P5R with the fusion alarm system, making things become even stronger because you could actually come out with something really, really cool early on in the game, which I can understand if people say is a little bit too easy. Maybe they'd have to dumb down how good the weapons would be if you got them right away or what skill cards they would turn into potentially for P6. That is if people thought it was too easy, but like I said, crank up the difficulty. You could always make the game just a little bit harder. And the fourth thing here that I think is probably one of the most important points that we can really have for P6 that I do not want them to go back on and do like the older Persona games and that is in P5R with how whenever you actually level up a confidant whether on your team or not typically different levels are not just arcana burst anymore a lot of times just like in P4 Golden you have most of the levels levels 1 through 10 within a different confidant pretty much all of them are arcana burst except for like two or three of them which end up just being most likely just different types of combat stuff if it's a person who you don't even have in combat a lot of times you're really not getting much all you're really getting is the ultimate persona for that arcana which kind of you know sucks nothing is really changing in battle a whole lot a couple different characters do have some different caveats different things like that that are a little bit different than certain characters but think about p5r if chihaya didn't give you those extra special abilities to actually level up different combat confidants faster or if Kawakami didn't allow you to sleep in class and be able to actually have more time because you can have her you know clean your room or you can have her clean the laundry and stuff for you to have better, better items and things. P5R does the best at this and I want this to be in Persona 6. Don't just have the confidants be arcana bursts where the you know persona you create for the arcana is just better but also having the extra special abilities. When it comes to P5R there's really only one or two maybe even three levels where you just it's just arcana burst which is completely fine you can't have something there for levels one through ten having ten different things for every single confidant is probably too challenging in the end of the day it's probably too much stuff that they'd have to create for the game it potentially could be done but then it wouldn't feel as significant maybe for those bigger things that you could get that can make smaller things for each level but really having it to where you have these big significant changes like getting Ryuji to level 3 or getting Kawakami to be able to do the laundry for you feels so significant when you get that and having more than just the arcana burst so this is why I would want that to be in Persona 6 because it just feels so much better to actually level up confidants and get more than just battle bonuses or arcana bonuses getting different overworld bonuses as well is so fun and I think one of the best mechanics of the game because it could change the playstyle so much from start to beginning and when you start a new game up you can level up someone else first and see how that helps you throughout your journey on like a new game plus or something like that maybe. And for the last thing that I would choose is something towards P3 and I think that is having more darker tones and darker elements with the storyline. I know P4 is supposed to be like this super cheery game, but there are still darker tones. I mean there's murder, there's you know death happening, there's still a lot of crazy stuff going on but I mean Pretty much all the time having a darker tone I think would be cooler and seeing how the game is, you know, it's pretty much always rated M. I think having a better darker tone for the whole story would be fun to see now. We've had P4 Golden, we've had P5R, we've had, you know, different spin-offs and stuff like that. For the most part, it is pretty joyous and, you know, fun. But I think having some darker tones and having a darker feeling around the game would be much cooler. I think the next game is going to have a purple theme. That's what I would love to see. And all the people are saying green, but I think a purple theme would be dope. And 
Purple sometimes to me feels like a depressing color at times. Maybe it does it for you, but I would really love to see this, you know, next Persona game. Persona 6, I guess you could say. I guess your spinoff could work with this as well, but I would like to see some darker tones, some darker elements into the game. You know, P3 did that so well and captivated that all the time. It wasn't just during the battles and the significant plot points, but it was in the environment and it stayed during the whole time with the different characters and stuff like that. And the amount of weight that the main character has to sort of carry through the whole time. I'm not saying there isn't dark elements of P4 or P5 or any of the spin-offs. There definitely are and like I said, the games are rated M for a reason. Whether or not it's Japan or ch you know China, Korea, wherever it is, America, technically the grading scale for you know how mature the game is changes, but it's still rated M. It does have dark elements in all of the games, including the spin-offs, but I think P3 throughout the whole time, and when it actually comes narratively, I think P3 does it the best with keeping those darker tones. And I know, maybe it's just because we haven't had a game like P3 in such a long time, but I would love to see P6 explore more darker themes. I think that'd be really cool to see. But um, yeah, let me know down in the comment section below. What would you like to see incorporated back into P6 from some of the older Persona games? It could be literally anything you want, like I said, but... Um, like, comment, subscribe for more content. Click that bell to be notified whenever I have a new video come out. I've been streaming a lot recently too. I've been doing a lot of Strikers, a lot of Persona for Golden. I'll be doing SMT3 Nocturne when it comes out. I'm doing a bunch of different games. But um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.